Deputy Mayor Jennifer McAlvey is making an announcement about the city's Transform TO Net Zero strategy. Let's go live to the Evergreen Brickworks for that. A true environmental champion she is. And I'd also like to acknowledge and thank James Nolan, the Executive Director of the City's Environment and Climate Division, for being with us here today and for the great work that he and his team have undertaken. And a huge thank you to Evergreen Brickworks for the opportunity to enjoy this beautiful, environmentally important venue. And I hope that many Toronto residents will come check it out down in here, uh, down at the Don Valley Brickyard. As Deputy Mayor and Chair of the Infrastructure and Environment Committee, I have the honour of leading Toronto's efforts to fight climate change. Earlier this month, I proclaimed April as Earth Month in the City of Toronto. And Earth Month reminds us of the benefits we enjoy when we protect our planet, invest in a more sustainable future, and take meaningful action against climate change. The City of Toronto has a long history of environmental leadership and one that I am extremely proud of. Across our city, Torontonians, business and community organizations are stepping up in meaningful and measurable ways to keep Toronto green, clean and healthy. And today, I'm here to highlight the city's leadership on taking action to address climate change. In 2019, I was so proud to stand alongside my council colleagues and declare the urgent need for all of us to do more to address the global, global climate emergency. By December of 2021, City Council had adopted an ambitious strategy, Transform TO, to reduce community-wide greenhouse gas emissions in Toronto to net zero by 2040. As governments around the world began to set their sights on a net zero 2050, Toronto leveraged our innovation and ingenuity to ensure our city does what is necessary to get there 10 years sooner. Our plan is bold. But thanks to support of experts, advocates and associations across Toronto, we know it is possible. And thanks to the hard work of Team Toronto, we continue to make progress on that plan. So there are two reports by the City this morning that will be released that detail the City's progress in implementing our ambitious climate strategy. The first report is the 2022 annual update on the city's progress as we transition from target setting to implementation. I look at this as a celebration report of our success. The second report is a carbon accountability report. I look at this as a wake-up call that we have much more work to do. Both will go to the Infrastructure and Environment Committee next week and City Council in the coming days. The first report, the 2022 annual update, outlines the city's progress in implementing the Transform TO Strategy's short-term implementation plan and provides an update on the five critical steps the city is taking to steer community-wide emissions towards net zero. These five steps are, one, establishing carbon accountability and showing this accountability through carbon budgeting. Two, rapidly reducing significant fossil gas use. Three, establishing building performance standards. Four, increasing the use of and adopting of low carbon transportation options like Diane Sachs cycling here today. And increasing five, increasing the amount of local renewable energy and storage opportunities. I am so pleased to report that all 30 actions in the city's short term implementation plan are underway with some already completed. Through these 30 actions and the continued delivery of programs, policies and investments, the City of Toronto continues to lay the foundation for widespread climate action to reduce greenhouse gas emissions now and in the future. Key 2022 achievements include implementing version 4 of the Toronto Green Standard. This report raised the bar for high performance, low emissions new buildings in Toronto. And thanks to these new standards, Toronto is expected to save more than one megaton of greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. Another, another thing that uh, we accomplished in 2022 is installing more than 100 EV charging stations in green P lots. Sorry, that's what we'll do this year. And by the end of 2024, the city will have more than 650 charging ports both on street and in green P parking lots. This EV charging plan will further support Toronto's transition to electric vehicles, continued expansion of our cycling and transit networks, and developing a wastewater energy program. 
at the Toronto Western Hospital, we have a sewer heat recovery project underway that will be the largest in the world. And we are also working with N-Wave to expand the deep lake water cooling system. We have also launched a solar TO web portal and solar map to enable home and building owners to assess the solar potential of their buildings. And we delivered an enhanced home energy loan program to help owner, homeowners improve the energy efficiency of their homes, replace their furnaces with electric heat pumps, and install EV chargers. This program saw a 500% increase in loan applications. We also established a climate advisory group to help guide implementation of our Transform TO strategy with an equity lens. Beyond this update, we have the second report I mentioned, and that's the Carbon Accountability Report. The Carbon Accountability Report will steer community-wide emissions and City of Toronto corporate emissions from the city's own operations towards net zero. This report outlines the process to establish multi-year emission budgets for Toronto's corporate and community-wide emissions. The report will be supported by an annual carbon budget that links city decision-making on policies, programs, and projects. This will be reported in the annual financial budget until net zero is achieved by 2040. The report also establishes a science-based corporate policy on offset credits aligned with net zero governance best practices. Implementing a carbon budget process will further demonstrate Toronto's global leadership in climate action gov governance. And I am incredibly proud of the progress we continue to make as a city to address the climate crisis. To tackle the environmental issues facing our world today, we need cities to be brave, to be bold, and to be aggressive. Toronto, together we can do this. We know climate action is a shared responsibility. The city's operations are directly responsible for only about 5% of the greenhouse gas emissions in the city of Toronto. That means residents, businesses, building owners, and other levels of government must all play a part. Toronto's community-wide greenhouse gas emissions have been reduced by 43% against 1990 levels, which is good news. We set a target for 2020 and we exceeded it. And to lead by example, the city plans to cut emissions from its own operations even faster. Our immediate challenge is to cut community-wide emissions in half in the next seven years by 2030. But we need everyone to get involved. Residents, businesses, homeowners, building owners, and importantly, our other levels of government to help reach our critical targets. As we approach Earth Day, I encourage all Toronto residents, businesses, homeowners, and building owners to learn more about the city's Transform TO strategy and get involved at livegreentoronto.ca. I'd like to thank you again for being here today, for joining me in this necessary work. Let's continue the fight for a greener future together. And I'd now like to pass it back to my wonderful colleague, Councillor Diane Sachs. Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor, and again to James Nolan and his team. I mean, as you can tell, the City of Toronto is doing a lot. We've been listening to Deputy Mayor Jennifer McAlvey making lot, an announcement uh, at the Evergreen uh, Brickworks. Uh, it's in regards to the city's Transform TO Net Zero strategy. Of, uh,